Now, see, I think a lot of damage has been done with some of the things that we say that sound so theological that aren't a bit theological. And they put God in a bad light. And I've been, I've, I've been guilty of using some of them too. And we all, I think, use phrases and we don't really think about them. Maybe until we get called on it and we go, hmm, not really sure about that. How many of you have heard this one? I take real umbrage with this one. God is using you in this hour to do something. Anybody heard that? If I hadn't prefaced it with taking umbrage with it, some of you probably would have amen. But you kind of know better now, and you go, don't amen that because he don't like that one. <laughs> don't amen. <laughs> he's, about to, he's about to expose that one. Don't, don't, don't say amen. And the reason why I take umbrage with it is because God is not a user. I'm not talking about in terms of drugs, although drugs, really, that, that phrase, he's a user, what does that mean? Why are we using drugs? Because we get an an end is achieved. It's not always the end we want, but an end is achieved. We use something synthetic to get to a, an end that we desire, thus we are a user. Now, we hear God is using you, and we honor that and go, well, that's great, God ought to use. We even sing, Jesus use me, and oh Lord, don't refuse me. We sang that in the church when I was growing up. And I thought that was a really noble prayer, say, Jesus use me. I realized that if in any other context of your life someone were to tell you, you know he's using you, we would be hurt and insulted. <laughs> so if someone were to say to you, you know that guy's using you, we might get defensive and go, oh, no, he's not. But they'd plant a seed and we go, you know what, he is using me. <laughs> he's using me for my money. He's using me for my position. He's using... Maybe he's using me for something illicit. Maybe he's using me for something filthy. Maybe, maybe she's using me to get ahead. But all of those, it's never good. There's never a moment in your life where someone says, he's using you, and you go, yeah, that's, <laughs> praise God. I love being used. So why have we put God as a user? Because in reality, God doesn't use you. God lives through you. He's not in the using business. I'm going to see what I can do with Justin. No, this is not God playing chess with the devil. And for too many of us, for so long, spirituality has been God playing cosmic chess with the devil. We even say these totally ungodly things like, well, the Lord's four steps ahead of the devil. He's a, he's a master, grandmaster chess player. And Satan may be making good moves now, but God's already got him cut off at the end. And it's not a cosmic battle. Christ has already won the battle. Him and the devil aren't sparring it out and fighting and exchanging blows. You already live from the place of victory, not towards victory. You already have what Christ has accomplished. God God's not in the using business because when you use, something gets used up. By definition, it gets used up. It always runs out. He moves through you, not using you. When Moses is walking through the backside of the desert, and I live in Southern California, and one thing that I can tell you that we have in abundance and if you, haven't, if, you, if you live there or you even go to vacation there, if you haven't seen one yet, just stay longer. You won't have to stay much longer, and that's a wildfire. They happen all the time, particularly in this time of year, brush fires. And a lot of times they'll happen, sometimes because of lightning strikes, sometimes because cigarette butts get thrown out windows, but they happen because it doesn't rain for six straight months. And when it does rain, everything turns really green and grows really big, and then it all dies because there's no rain, and now you got a lot of weeds, and now you got problems. And the wind blows in off the coast, and these fires go rushing across hills. Something as easy as wind will cause a fire in California. Two dry weeds in a field, and the wind will make them rub one another, and that friction will cause a spark, and then the whole field goes up. And so you, as you're driving, you'll be driving on, along the freeway, and you'll see just billows of smoke, and there's helicopters and planes overhead, and they're putting out water. You know, so much so that you almost stop you know, just kind of ignore it. You're just used to seeing it, and it happens all the time. And one of the residuals, of course, is that the field is black after the fire. You can see, for, for the next six months, you can see where the fire consumed. My point in all of that is, you don't really get that excited. You don't sometimes even comment on it. That's sad, but we see so many of them that it's not the first thing out of your mouth when you walk through the front doors. Hey, there's a big fire going on. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, yeah, I saw that. It's natural. It happens in the wilderness. It happens in the desert. 
Moses is walking through the backside of the desert and sees a bush burning. Trust me, folks, when you live near burning bushes, you don't take a special trip to go watch it burn. It's not that exciting. You see it every day. Moses has seen 10,000 burning bushes. He's seen hillsides set on fire, black, following that fire, smoke rolling, no big deal. But if you were to see one, and as it moved, none of the grass was turning black, because Moses says he saw a bush that burned but was not consumed. Now that you'd pull over on the freeway and get out and watch. <laughs> so Moses is walking and sees a fire burning, but there's no consumption. In other words, the fire is moving, but there's no black grass underneath. There's not even any smoke because smoke's a sign of consumption. And there's nothing going up. It's just a flame. And Moses goes, wow, look at that. How is it possible that that bush burns but doesn't burn up? And when he goes and stands next to that bush, he hears God speak. And God says, take your shoes from off your feet for the ground whereon you stand is holy. What have we discovered? This is how God works through you and me. Because God burns through you and me without using you and I. If God is a user, then the grass is black and the smoke is flying and the bush is being consumed. And what I've seen in life and in ministry is a lot of people dedicate themselves to the work of the Lord and they say, Jesus, use me. And they think it's perfectly natural that their family's falling apart, that their finances are falling apart, that they can't sleep at night, that they're living under stress, that they're always under attack. And they'll say, I'm doing it all for Jesus. Everything I'm going through, I'm going through for God. And they're losing things in their wake. And they're doing it for the Lord and the reality is is it cannot be inspired of God if it doesn't bring life if it brings consumption and death you cannot be attached to a living vine because it's natural that if you're on a living vine living fruit will come out of you it doesn't have to come out at your pace but it will come out and if it's just consumption stop what you're doing and re-examine you say, yes, but God called me to this. God did not call you to violence and consumption. God did not call you to hurt and to pain. I didn't say everything will be easy. I didn't say you won't be persecuted. I didn't say there won't be trouble sometimes. For every one of us that partake in the glory of Christ, Paul said, we also partake in the sufferings of Christ. Yes, we do partake in difficult times, but those difficult times do not burn out our soul. They can't because we are a bush that burns that is not consumed. 